What's up guys? I'm back at it. Today we're going to be looking at Echoes of Mana. Some tips and tricks video. Uh, I've been watching all the content creators and most of them don't actually know what they're talking about because they're barely any way on the game. They're just trying to get content out so I was like let me do the, fa the community a favor. Get some proper tips and tricks out. There's going to be about 12 of them in this one. Starting with the easy ones and then as you get on it'll be ones that maybe even experienced players won't know. So watch through to the video. I'm sure this is going to be something that you're going to learn. First thing is how to get stronger. It's simple. It's everything. Like there's no one specific thing that helps you gain specific to get stronger. But the main thing is obviously levels. It's purely because of the range that it has. So you can go up to level 100. So that's obviously going to give you more power. But in essence, your gear, your leveling, your mana board, your memory gems, unleashing and ascending. All of that plays a big factor into it. And all of it can give you a big boost. So focus on all of it. Only focus on three units. Pick your three main units and only st and only do them. Not even your support. You can throw your supports in to level them up. Don't throw any, any um, uh, materials into them. Second thing, get to the weapon dungeon as, as, as soon as possible. So I know a lot of people will be like, just do the quests. Your gear come, your three star and four star gear and five star gear will come from the higher level dungeons. The three star gear you will get in the quest line, and if you do the very hard and the hard quests you can get the, the four star gear but you'll get a lot more of it from the higher dungeons so focus on getting through to um hall of lazude at least uh, level three even if you're like five thousand or a thousand under there are a lot of people that can carry you and even if there's like three of you that are like a thousand under it co-op makes the game a lot easier so try get into it to get your gear there next one number three on the party screen this is a simple one but you never know if you hold on your character, it'll take you to the character screen. If you hold on your memory gem, it'll take you to the memory gem. So it's a very simple way of moving around instead of having to go around all the, all the tabs. And even at the bottom there, there is the tabs as well. It's just a small tip that I've learned. Lock your character. That's the next one. On the top of the tip, you'll see it says there's a little purple pink block that says locked. Always remember to do that just so that you don't feed your characters. The next thing that I want you to, um, that's a, that could be a problem or something that you might make a mistake of in your mana board. If you don't have enough, if you don't have enough mana crystals and you click on it, if I don't have enough, it's going to make me use my spirit crystals. And if you're missing a lot, it can use, you can make you use up to like five, five, six, seven hundred crystals. So please be careful when clicking yes, yes, yes. That you don't use your spirit crystals. Spirit crystals are the, are the is the currency you use for summoning and to refresh your energy. So be very careful when filling up your mana board that you don't just click, 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 and use all your spirit crystals up without even realizing it. And that's the next thing. <coughs> Excuse me. On. Don't forget about your character bonds when you click on the menu screen. So in the top right of the of the screen, you will see there's three little lines. When you click on those three little lines, it'll show you there's a Normally you'll see a little red thing by character bonds, like a little red um, notification. Don't forget that. Like I left mine over here so that I could show you guys. That's where you can collect crystals and stuff. Don't forget to do that. There is nowhere else on the screen to click on it to take you there. You must go to the top right hand corner and get on it. Another thing, another tip is saving your battery life. I've noticed this game was trying battery life very quickly in the beginning. So I was like, now let me find out. So I just put my graphics on to low and if you click on the battle one, I took off the special techniques and mega spirit magic. It's just to help with saving the battery life and it actually did. So give it a try, see if that helps you if you are having an issue with your phone battery being eaten a lot. Then moving on to the next thing, which four star should you use? Any of them, they're all good. I know a lot of people are like Paploy or however you say it, if I'm wrong, you can tell me how to pronounce it in the comments. All of them are good. I've even seen Paploys in the Hall of the Zoo level four kicking ass. So whichever one you want to use, use them. Obviously some might be better than others, depending on how you want to play. There's a lot of theories out there as to whether they're going to fall off or not. I mean, there's only six of them currently. So things were obviously going to change in the future, but use whichever one you want to. They're all good. Whichever ones you get. If you don't have them, pick a three star that you like and just build it because you will eventually get the four stars. Next thing to do is when you're doing co-op, please remember to create autoplay a lot of people don't do that the reason being is when a lot of people are higher left enough level or even when you are like say 500 below 
you can auto the stage. You do have to, however, watch the stage so that you can dodge things when you have to. And that's another tip is remember to dodge when you are autoing things, especially things that are like so you're sort of on level with or that you're struggling with. That's going to be one of the main things that will help you get through it is just to remember to dodge. The dodging can actually be found if you are, he has this quick, quick screenshot that I can took. You see my guy in the middle, he's busy dodging. Right next to the attack button, there's like a little button of a man jumping away. You use that or where, on the left hand side where the manual analog stick is to move your character. If you just flick it up or down, it also helps you dodge. So that's another thing to remember. And But going back to the, the co-op quest when creating one, just so that you know to like, I just want to show you where you're going to find that auto, um, the auto one. I haven't done the Amagetti room yet because I don't need that gear. I've only got strength units. So when you create a, create a room, if you click there by requirement and you click auto play, you click create a room, that's the way to go. It helps people help you because when I'm like a level 6000 and I'm doing Hall of Pursuit 3 to help people, I don't want to have to manual it. I can just let my characters free range and I can switch on switch characters by myself. But yeah, I don't want to be doing that for fun, just for the fun of it, to actually manual stages. And a lot of people don't put autoplay. The one that I will say do not put autoplay with is the new event, the hardest stage. Don't put autoplay with that. You have to dodge that properly. A lot of people, that is a very tough one, even for myself. It's a very tough one to get through. Um, and you need like a proper team. Like people going in there, if you're under 6,000k, don't be doing it like yes maybe five and a half if you've got two other stronger unit people with you but otherwise don't do that but that's enough of the event i don't really want to put that in this video uh, moving on to the next thing which training to do so when you go to your training let's just get out of the screen when you go to your training and you go to the item training and there's you get your daily dungeon where you can only do it three times which one do you do the simple answer is tomes but what I would like for you to, what I would say is do all of them at least once that you can get the spirit crystals from them. As you can see, I've only been playing for a couple of days, so I haven't been able to do all of them. But I do have a chance now to do three and then I'll complete all of them. But do the tombs. The memory gem one is not worth it because you can actually grind it in the items dungeon by doing the, oopsie, by doing the echo maze. So if you do the echo maze, if you do the echo maze, you will see that um, you can get all the stuff for the memory gems so it's not worth doing a daily quest there and the, the lucre which is the other currency of gold you can get that from um, you can get that from doing the all any any quest at, at all so don't worry about doing that so literally just focus on getting the tombs because there's nowhere else to get them yes you can get them from events and stuff and as rewards but the main thing is from yeah so get them then that'll bring us to the final the final tip of this video and I hope this has been helping you guys. The final tip is actually to do with those tombs. <coughs> Excuse me. If you look at the the tombs when using them, don't use them on your units, your main units and stuff, the units that you're busy upgrading. Only use them on your rabbits. The reason being, when you use a tomb on a rabbit, or a tome, however you want to pronounce it, when you use a tome or tomb, on the on the unit you see when I use it on a rabbit it goes to 16 out of 15 if I use one large one if you go to a normal three star character which is the same level as that rabbit or the same star level as that rabbit and I use one tomb on it you see it only takes it to level 10 so it, you are losing out on so much experience when you're using it on your normal characters use it only on your rabbits I mean if you've got an abundance of them and you've used all your rabbits and you've got nothing else to do fine go for it but don't just boost them in the beginning your units in the beginning because you can use it on your rabbits instead of that because there's no way to actually level them up so it's it's more it's it's better to use your rabbits to try and get them to four star and then from there you can use your four star rabbits to evolve your units into to the five stars instead of using wasting tombs on your other characters and you can't upgrade your rabbits and you have to wait to get all the four star rabbits yes the, the game does give you rabbits as rewards the four star ones but it's very few um i think in so far in the game i've got four in total now or five so like you're not going to get a lot so it's a lot easier to upgrade the rabbits using tomes than actually having to put uh grind grind normal units to get them all the way up to four star and then put a rabbit into them anyway guys i hope you liked the video i hope this gave you enough info and you guys learned something please leave a like and a comment and, a sus and subscribe 
Peace.